Hey, it's Norman with iSave Tractors. In this video, we're going to discuss the differences between garden tractor two-stage snow blowers, one-stage snow throwers, and snow plows. Check it out. Here we go. Before we go into this video, I just want to acknowledge the inevitable. There are probably going to be people in the comments who say that garden tractors aren't enough for snow removal and that you require a truck or a bigger tractor. Well, I'm here to tell you that's not true. I have been taking care of an eight acre farm property here in Maine for the last decade only using garden tractor class equipment. When done correctly, these tractors are more than enough to handle all of your suburban and rural snow removal needs. With that out of the way, let's get with the video. So let's start by talking about the single stage snow thrower. This single stage snow thrower is mounted to my John Deere 400 garden tractor. As you can see, it picks up that snow and throws it really far. I'm guesstimating that's about maybe 30 feet away. And boy, does it look beautiful with the sun hitting it at that angle. Now a single stage snow thrower is defined by a snow thrower that's only doing one thing and that's rotating this giant rotating rotor that catches the snow, scoops it into the snow thrower, and then throws it out of the chute. All in one motion. It's just one thing spinning. Now, a lot of people think that a single stage snow thrower isn't a good snow thrower and it doesn't throw snow very far. But as you can see in this video, it works really well. But there is a caveat. So if you have a snowfall that is in the upper temperatures close to 32 degrees Fahrenheit, that snow might become wet and slushy. And in those instances, a single stage snow thrower does not do as well as a two stage snow blower. It can still do it, but it doesn't throw it as far and it can clog the chute and can cause a lot of frustration and take you a little bit more time. There are some workarounds to improve that performance. If you find yourself needing to snow blow in wet, heavy snow, what you can do is you can spray uh, some kind of lubricant throughout the inside of the snow thrower to prevent snow from sticking to it. There are commercial products out there that is like a Teflon spray that you can spray in there. You can also use WD-40, and a lot of people even use a cooking spray uh, like PAM and things similar to that. That will prevent that wet snow from bunching up and clogging and allow you to kind of carry on. You do have to keep in mind that the wet snow won't throw as far, so you'll kind of have to manage uh, where you drive more carefully. Now, what I like to do, since I don't really have to go to a 9-to-5 job and kind of be snow throwing you know, right when the snow comes, is I wait until it gets colder so hypothetically say it's 32 degrees you have six inches of wet snow that falls you have a choice you can either go snow throw it right away and deal with that wet snow or you can do what i do i typically wait until the temperatures drop and i snow throw either in the evening or the very next morning nice and early when the temperatures drop the snow solidifies and it's no longer sticky and it will blow like crazy in fact this video of this John Deere 400, the, it snowed the night before, and it was kind of wet and slushy. And, you know, I, I wasn't going to snow throw at night anyways because I wanted to film it so you can see it. But once I waited to the very next morning, I started uh, working on my property at maybe 6.37 in the morning, and that snow was perfect. And as you can see, it threw it no problem. But if those limitations and those considerations won't match for your needs, let's move on to the two-stage snowblower. So here is an example of a two-stage snowblower. This is a 42-inch two-stage snowblower mounted to a Ford LGT-165. The advantages of the two-stage snowblower is it can handle wet, heavy snow a little bit better since it has two stages to it, and it can handle deeper snow a little bit quicker. If I were to say, if I were to put a number on it, I would say it's probably between 30 and 50% faster at removing really deep snow than a single stage snow thrower. And the reason is the snowblower, of course, has two things going on at once. There is a rotating rotor that's job is to cut and scoop the ice and feed it into this rotating impeller. The impeller's job is then to shoot the snow out of the, the chute 
you know, as far as possible. Here's a clip that kind of shows it a little bit up close. You'll see the big spirally uh, rotor. That's going to cut and scoop the snow and feed it into the impeller, which is in the center rear of that snowblower. Here, let's get some clips of uh, some deep snow getting removed now. These clips here are to show you just how much snow we get here in Maine. As you can see, this is out my front door. And then this next clip is a little walkway along our uh, part of our farm property here. You can see kind of how much. This is just from one storm. I believe this is from the Bomba Genesis storm we had in 2018. This is a little walkway next to my house. So as you can see, uh, we're used to getting a lot of snow here all at once. I believe it was, it might have been like a 24-inch storm. This is a GoPro shot of the same tractor going through. You can see the snow kind of curling a little bit in front of the snowblower. And that just kind of gives you a perspective of how deep this is. Now watch right here, I'm actually getting off the tractor so I could go get my camera and reposition it. And you'll see me, look at how I'm walking through the snow, that's how deep it is. It looks like it's up to my kneecaps. And again, this is from one storm, and this two-stage snowblower took it all down pretty easily. Okay, let's go back to uh, the cool looking drone footage here. One of the techniques to make your snowblower or snow thrower work a little bit more efficiently is only taking bites of snow that fill up half of your snowblower. Of course, on your first pass, you're going to take a, an entire snowblower full. But on your subsequent passes, if you just fill up half that snowblower or snow thrower, it will allow your machine to work a lot less hard and throw the snow a little bit better. So as a rule of thumb, you take your first pass full bite, and then if it's really deep snow, you kind of take half bites. If it's uh, less than like six inches, you could go ahead and take full bites. That's up to you. But that's just a little tip on how to run the snowblower when you're facing uh, heavy snowfalls. So as you can see, both two-stage snowblowers and single-stage snow throwers are very effective at removing snow. It gives a small sub-1,000 pound machine, like a garden tractor, the ability to move a lot of snow in a short amount of time. But there are trade-offs that come with it. Snowblowers and so snow throwers, since they uh, involve a lot of mechanical advantage through the engine and other rotating masses, there's going to be a lot more maintenance. The single-stage snowthrower, I believe, has six bearings in it, and the two-stage snowblower, I believe, has ten bearings in it. Uh, the two-stage snowblower has two 90-degree gearboxes, uh, some chains, rotating an impeller and a rotor at the same time. The, the one-stage snowthrower also has a 90-degree gearbox, as well as one big rotating mass, and I believe it has one counter shaft. So there's a lot of bearings, a lot of things to grease, and when things do go wrong and break, it is harder to fix it, and it does take longer. So when a snowblower or snow thrower goes down on a Sunday morning, you really should have a backup machine, or at least have uh, some other backup way of removing snow when that inevitable day does come. But as you can see, if you maintain them well and you kind of are a little bit proactive, in your maintenance and plan B preparedness. Snowblowers and snow throwers do a great job for removing snow on your suburban or rural homestead. Now let's move on to my preferred way of removing snow here in rural Maine, and that's with a garden tractor snow plow. The machine you're looking at here, it's a larger garden tractor. This is a Toro Groundsmaster 345 with a snow plow on it. Now, snow blowers and snow throwers re rely on engine horsepower to remove your snow. Garden tractor plows is going to rely on traction and weight to move the snow. So garden tractors are still plenty heavy 
to plow snow. This garden tractor is on the heavier side with the cab. I estimate this at being about 1,800 pounds. However, I'll show you clips in a moment of other garden tractors that are 800 to 1,200 pounds, and they remove snow fine as well. There are some additional considerations when using a snow plow. Uh, but before we get into that, I'll just kind of tell you why I like snow plowing. One, I think snow plowing is a lot more fun. You don't have to worry about snow being blown back in your face from wind. And there's something really satisfying about seeing snow roll off the front of a snow plow. And it's, it's just way cool. I love it. Uh, some of the considerations when snow plowing and some of the downsides is you really can't handle really, really heavy snowfalls all at once. So you do have to plan ahead. This Toro Groundsmaster can tackle quite a lot of snow. I've done 12-inch uh, storms uh, with this no problem. But some of my lighter machines, I have to come out and plow once during the storm. So for example, that same 12-inch storm that I could tackle no problem with this machine, with a lighter machine, I'd have to come out and probably snow plow at five to six inches and then come back again at the end of the storm and do another five to six inches. To me, that's no problem. That's twice the fun. I get to plow twice and it's great. So some things to help garden tractor snow plows do its thing is adding as much weight on the machine as you can. These antique and vintage garden tractors, their axles and rear ends can handle a lot of weight. So don't be afraid, weigh it down. I usually fill the tires with liquid, add wheel weights, add a counterweight in the back of ballast, and let it rip. So with, with all that in mind, if you have good weight and good traction, you can add chains for if you get icy storms. That will help a lot. Uh, but in some areas of the country and the world, for that matter, chains aren't necessary. But I use chains on everything. And the combination of chains and weight really make these snow removal beasts. Another advantage of the snowplow is they're virtually maintenance-free. If you have a fancy snowplow, like uh, a tilt and angle one from our John Deere 400, there are hydraulic cylinders and a few other, uh, other rotating parts that you have to be aware of. But it's still by far less maintenance than a snowblower. A plow is a very simple device. I usually just keep my plow blades straight and I just plow along. One of the reasons I do that is... Uh, garden tractors are so short and so light that when you angle the blade off to the side, you know, it works on the first few storms, but after the snow banks pile up and you're trying to angle the blade and push the snow to the side, those snow banks will push your tractor off course and push it all over the place. So I like to do straight snow plow pushes with all my garden tractors. I actually um, push them very far off the driveway. That's another disadvantage to the snow plow is eventually, as the winter moves on, you run out of places to put snow. So you do have to plan in advance and push the snow much further in the beginning of winter than you think you need to. That way, if you do get a ton of snow, you have places to continue pushing it. Uh, with a little bit of planning, it's no problem. Back to the maintenance. Like plows, typically maintenance-free. Sometimes the worst things that you'll have to maintain are the cutting edge on the bottom of the snow plow as well as fixing up maybe some uh, bends or nicks if you hit a root or a rock or something like that on your property but much quicker than a snowblower to fix you can fix a snowplow in hours versus fixing a snowblower or snow thrower in days okay i think we've had enough of this toro groundsmaster snow plowing let's check out some clips from other tractors that i have with snow plows this is a John Deere 400 now with a, a two-way snow blade on instead of the single-stage snow thrower. Here I am showing an example of using the tilt function, the hydraulic tilt function on this snow blade. For low snowfalls like this, you can see this is a like a wet slushy snow early in winter. It works great at pushing it to the side and it makes for a nice clean driveway or a clean property surface. So the problem with this style of snow plowing here, using the angle function and pushing it along your driveway, is if you're in a high volume snow environment like we are in Maine, as the winter progresses, those snow banks beside your driveway are gonna get large. They also might freeze 
or melt and then freeze and then become immovable. So if you keep using the angle function, those snowbanks will eventually be able to overpower your machine. And in that case, in order to widen your driveway and provide more space to put snow, you're going to need to either use a bigger machine or a snowplow to come in here and take care of that. So I was just doing this uh, as an example in the video, but I eventually will push all this snow far off my driveway, 20, 30 feet, to give plenty of room for future locations to dump the snow. Here is a Wheel Horse 312-8. This is uh, definitely on one of the lighter side of machines that I have. This Wheel Horse 312-8 uh, weighs only about 600, I believe, pounds, according to tractordata.com. That's my wife driving it. Uh, this, I have no chains on it. I have 50-pound wheel weights as well as like a 50-pound rear ballast weight. And as you can see, this handles this snow easily as well. It's not a lot of snow. This is maybe only um, maybe five inches, four or five inches of snow. But even without the chains, without additional weights, this does a, a heck of a job as well. And if you're a fan of garden tractor front-end loaders like I am, here is a snowplow that I made, uh, or I modified like a Craftsman snowplow, and I modified it to fit onto the front-end loader bucket. And as you can see, this machine moves snow pretty easily. There's no chains on this one, but this tractor weighs about 1,500 pounds the way it's set up. Definitely a head-turner. So this is a great way to add further capabilities to your garden tractor front-end loader. Uh, this snowplow just kind of clips on to the front-end loader, and then I keep it tight with ratchet straps. I have a future build coming up where you don't need the ratchet straps. Before I got my Toro Groundsmaster with the heated cab, I always used a garden tractor front-end loader mounted with one of these snowplows. I really like this because the loader allows you to be able to lift the plow over six feet in the air. That way you can pile snow banks up to as tall as six feet. So with that, I didn't have to push the snow as far from the driveway. I could just continue piling it upwards. And that became a huge advantage uh, during the years where we had a really high percentage of snowfall. And as you can see, this, uh, this moves snow really fast. I can get some good speed coming down the driveway with this setup. Well, there you have it. That's my video kind of talking about the differences, pros and cons and experiences with a garden tractor single stage snow thrower, a two stage snow blower, as well as various snow plow setups. I kind of just laid the video here and just sat in front of a microphone and talked. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was fun chatting about uh, what I love most and that's uh, garden tractors and snow removal. It's, uh, it's great. A lot of people from Maine move down south, as a, we call them snowbirds. The older they get, they eventually find uh, home winter homes in Florida. Me, I think I'm going to stick around forever. I'm going to always uh, enjoy moving snow, especially with that Toro Groundsmaster with the heated cab. Uh, to summarize this video, snow blowers, and snow throwers, and snow plows all have their place on garden tractors. Snow blowers and snow throwers, you don't have to worry about pushing the snow back a certain distance, but you do have to worry about increased maintenance. With snow throwers and snow blowers, you can wait till the storm's over and then go out and take care of it. But with a snow plow, you do have to plan ahead a little bit, possibly go out one to two times during the storm. My opinion, get them both or get all three, a snow blower, a snow thrower and a snow plow. Then you're set up and you can kind of pick your machine and have a lot of fun. Uh, once again, my name is Norman. I'm with iSave Tractors. iSaveTractors.com. We are the leading developers of aftermarket parts for your vintage cast iron small engines, such as your old Kohler K-Series, Wisconsin, Onan, Tecumseh, Briggs & Stratton, and many more. Please look us up at iSaveTractors.com. That's about 20 minutes of talking for me. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.